Okay. Little buggeroo. As you lay on a summer's day in a cool and shady place, don't look up into the skies. Instead, look down and squint your eyes. Squint your eyes so very tight, and if you look with all your might, you'll find the land of more than small, for in this land live bugs. That's all. Yay! See the cactus? North is north, and south is south, and east is east, but all... Of all four directions, west is best. Just west of west, the tumbleweeds blew across the land. They bounced and blew for miles and miles and wouldn't stop until they came to rest on a rustic fence of wirewood pine. There, west of Bugville, lived bugs who were rough, tough, and tumble, like the plant named after them, the tumbleweed. A tough breed. These bugs of Western Bugville, for they lived in a rough land. Out here, the bugmobile was replaced by the horsefly and the rangy, rangy beast with four legs instead of two. Every morning, just after sunup and before the breakfast bell rang in the bug house, Little buggeroos would mosey out to the corral and rope their favorite horsefly. Then, after saddling up, the buggeroos would ride hard to the north or south 40 acres, repair a fence or two, and then race back to the ranch in a cloud of grit and dust. This was all done before breakfast, not a minute after. The buggeroos started learning young. The youngest of the buggaroos was a little cowbug, about knee high to grasshopper called G Hopper. He was a neat little kid who could ride in any horsefly and rope anything and usually everything on the ranch that his daddy, Hopalong Hopper, and his mama, Martha, owned. All the other buggaroos liked little G because he was a quiet, hard-working cow bug, just like the rest of them. Yes. G-Hopper, like all the youngsters in the land of more than small, had to go to school. Every morning at the crack of dawn, his daddy would harness a couple of horseflies and hook them to the bug board. A fancy kind of wooden wagon then they would hee-haw their way into town, bug-bent for leather. The other young bugs at Buttonwood School made fun of G-Hopper. They called him Tex, or Plowboy. Sometimes they'd make fun of his boots or the western shirts he wore, but G always kept his cool. He'd chew on a long-stemmed weed and smile a shy smile, as he moseyed on his way to Miss Grammar's class. One of the bugs who razzed a little louder than the rest was stuck-up dude called Jitterbug. Now, Jitterbug was really a real city slicker, and he didn't like G-Hopper at all. The fact that he didn't know G didn't matter. He simply didn't like him because he was different. No matter what G did, Jitterbug always tried to do better. This competition could have gone on forever, except one day Ms. Grammer had a, a surprise. Today, students, she said, as teachers do, we're going on a field trip. With that, her class Jitterbug and G included hopped on the bus and drove out of town. They didn't head south to Bugville Museum or east of Bugville City Hall as they had in past trips. Instead, they headed west out to the Lone Prairie for Miss Grammar felt it was time these bug children from the city saw how bugs lived out in the country. The buzz drove and drove 
as the little bug sang songs and looked at all there was to see, as G was singing, Jitterbug tried to sing louder. And the competition continued even on the noisy school bus. It wasn't long before they came to the ranch that belonged to G Hopper's father, Hopalong. There they all piled off the school bus, rushing hither, thither, and yawn. Hopalong Hopper greeted Ms. Grammer's class and then asked his son G to give the kids a tour of the ranch. Well, G thought this was swell, and he proudly showed them all around the place where he lived and worked. He showed them the bug house where they all lived. He showed them the garden where Martha, his mother, grew most of the food they ate. And he showed them the coral where the wild horse flies were peened waiting to be broke to ride. Jitterbug couldn't miss a chance like this, so he challenged G to ride one of the wild horse flies. G smiled one of his shy little smiles and quickly saddled up one of the rougher horse flies. He carefully climbed into the saddle and with a he and a haw, he bucked and rode around the ranch. Jitterbug didn't say much. He just stood in the back of the ooing crowd and watched in grudging respect. Darn, he said, gee, is pretty good, but I'll find something I can beat him at, yet. Yeah. They spent the rest of the day watching G do all those things he was best at doing. G roped and tied po a pony fly. He bucked hay in the fields and he even got to drive the tractor and pulled the children around the farm in a great wooden wagon filled with hay. Jitterbug was fit to be tied. for there was nothing he could beat G at. Late in the afternoon, every bug stopped what he was doing and sat down at the biggest country supper any of the city bug children had seen. There was corn on the cob, baked bean soup, and of course, fruit or pie. Sitting right in the middle of the table was a large platter of red peppers. Aha, said Jitterbug brashly. I've watched you rope and wrangle all over this ranch, and there has been nothing I could beat you at. But now I'll show you the one thing I can beat any bug at, eating. And with that, he began to stuff his face with food from all over the table. Dad, and cheese. Cheese? Jitterbug ate corn on the cob, but he couldn't do that better than G-Hopper. He slurped the bean, baked bean stew, but he couldn't do that better either. Why, he even tried out to out-eat G with the fritter pie, but that was G-Hopper's favorite. Jitterbug was so frustrated trying to beat G as something that he finally challenged him to a pepper-eating contest of red peppers. G looked at Jitterbug as though he were out of his mind and said, You go ahead. This time you win. Jitterbug laughed and stuffed a pepper in his mouth. Before he swallowed, he stuffed in another and another. Ha ha, he giggled. I win. And he chewed and chewed. It didn't take long before the face turned red and steam poured from his ears. He raced from the table to drink some water a lot of water for red peppers are the hottest around. Life is a game, or so they say, but if life is a pepper, don't bother to play. Peppers. Peppers. What color are those peppers? Um, red. Good job. What color is the bowl? Red. No, this right here. What color is that? Um, purple. Yep, purple. What color is this? Um, green. Good job. What color is this? Red. Pack
found it, bro. Oh, all right. That is the end. <laughs> Bedtime. That was little buggery.